In this segment, we're going to talk about picking a set of alternatives to evaluate. First, let's return to the concept of a design space. The design space is the span of our design vectors, which is the parameterization of the concepts that we're looking to trade. The design vector is specified in terms of design variables, and each of these design variables has associated with it a range and expected values that it's allowed to take. These are derived from the concepts that we generated earlier in the activities. The process by which we're defining our potential design space is called enumeration. Enumeration is specifying the particular levels that the design variables are allowed to take on. It's representing the ultimate potential design space that we could evaluate. The enumerated range for the design variables specify the range across which our evaluative models must operate. Sampling is the act of taking a subset of our enumerated space in order to determine which particular alternatives we're going to evaluate with our models. Picking that subset needs to take into account the amount of resources that we have available. Executing our evaluative models always requires time and effort. Consider a satellite system with two types of design variables. One type are orbital parameters. The other type are physical spacecraft parameters. Orbital parameters include apogee altitude, perigee altitude, and orbital inclination. The altitudes are in units of kilometers and have an enumerated range from 150 kilometers to 1100 kilometers. Our orbital inclination has an enumerated range at 0, 30, 60, and 90 degrees. These are specifying the range across which our orbital dynamics model needs to be able to evaluate our alternatives. Now from the enumerated range, we sample a subset, three particular levels for each of our altitudes, 150, 650, and 1100 kilometers, and then two particular levels for our orbital inclination, 0 degrees and 60 degrees. Picking these discrete levels results in 18 particular orbital combinations for our alternatives. This is a much smaller subset than the full range that were enumerated. Our physical spacecraft parameters have a number of categorical variables. For example, antenna gain, enumerated as high and low. Communication architecture, enumerated as TDRS or direct communications. Propulsion type, enumerated as electric or chemical. Power type, enumerated as solar or battery. And delta V, enumerated in kilometers per second across the range 6 to 12. We then sample this, high and low for antenna gain, TDRS only for communication architecture, electric and chemical for our propulsion type, solar only for our power type, and then three discrete levels for our delta V, 6, 9, and 12. In this way, our sampling has picked out a reduced set from the full enumerated trade space. Now, there are a number of issues we must keep in mind when selecting particular design variable levels. Our trade space is usually a discretization of the full span of our design vector set. That is, we often don't get to see the full design space evaluated. Now, the size of the space grows quickly, and we need to be able to trade off breadth versus depth. The more detailed our modeling, the more time required for execution of our evaluation models. This is the depth problem. Second, the more designs that we explore, this also requires more time. This is the breadth problem. The more designs that we look at, the better understanding we have of the trade space, but the more detailed modeling we have, the more depth we have in understanding the alternatives on hand, the more confidence we have in the particular performance values that are evaluated. Now, various techniques exist to sample the trade space. This includes random sampling and design of experiments. A question we're often asked is why not use optimization? Now, optimization works for a given set of objective functions and constraints, but it tends to just give us an answer. Our goal here is trade space exploration, that is, understanding the relationship in the broad trade space between what we ask for and what we can get. This includes poor designs, designs that would not be considered via optimization. That doesn't mean optimization isn't useful. In fact, we can use hybrid strategies that combine both optimization and other sampling techniques to get a focused look at different regions of a trade space. Now, ideally, we want to sample our full trade space, but practically, especially for the larger design spaces, and for those in which the evaluative models require a lot of resources, we need to execute a sampling strategy. There's ordered sampling strategies, such as Latin Hypercube and Taguchi Design of Experiments, and there are also random strategies, where we pick designs and look for patterns in the trade space. Now, we need to be wary about how selected sampling strategies may introduce false patterns in the trade space. For example, picking three discrete levels of a continuous variable could result in striations in the trade space. The striations are due solely to the sampling and not due to the physics of the problem. For complex designs, oftentimes the design spaces tend to be bumpy, that is nonlinear and discontinuous, numerous local minima. Ordered searches presume linear or low order dependencies, so these may only be valid in local regions of a trade space. 
One approach that we recommend is flat probability random sampling. For this approach, every design vector element is treated as equally likely to take on every value across its range. One can then use a Monte Carlo approach to sample across its flat probability distributions to generate an arbitrary number of samples. Consider the example for XTOS. In this example, we look at four different sampling levels at 50, 200, 2000, and 20,000 to see the impact on our trade space insights. At 50 points, we don't really see many patterns in the trade space. By the time we reach 2000 points, it's clear there's some patterns that are emerging in terms of clusters of design alternatives and a Pareto front. By 20,000 points, the Pareto front is well defined, so too are various groups of designs in the trade space. At this point, we feel that the trade space has converged enough to start looking for actual patterns in the trade space. The best sampling strategy for a given trade space is a matter of expert opinion. It must be determined iteratively based on the amount of resources available and that trade-off of depth versus breadth.